have a strap for today's practice. Uh, if you don't have a strap, using a scarf or a belt, anything that's accessible like that is absolutely fine as well. And we'll get started with our intention while we're on the back today. Come all the way down onto your back. You can either just be laying flat, um, but you can either just lay here on your back or if it's comfortable for you, you can bring your feet into cobbler's pose. So the bottoms of the feet touching together and the knees opening up. And so in that position, we've got some opening already happening through the hips. Today, our practice will be about the three big ages, the hips, the hamstrings, and the heart, trying to get all of these things open. And specifically, we're working with ideas of resentment and other deep emotions that might be coming up for you right now. So imagine, just in your mind's eye, and we'll be working on this largely through our meditation that we'll take toward the end of class, um, but imagine in your mind's eye someone or something that you're resentful toward right now. And so maybe it's even some, somebody like the governor, you're a little bit resentful that, that your job has changed. Maybe you're resentful um, for, for somebody in your family or for someone who's hurt you in the past. And you're still carrying around those yucky feelings of resentment. And maybe it doesn't pop up in your mind all day, every day, but it's still definitely there. And, and until we process that emotion, it's still stuck in our body and we're still, it's still draining our energy. And so as we move into just really good stretches today, we're imagining that we're stretching through some of those resentful emotions. And then in our final meditation today, we'll, we'll get some nice time to, to work through some of the emotions themselves. Um, the way that we're working with our body today is gentle pulses, letting our stretch get deeper and deeper through each and every pulse. And that rhythmic feeling that we're going to be taking on through our stretches helps us to get deeper and deeper each time. And sometimes that's what resentment feels like. It's like at first, it's just the, the raw emotion that feels awful. And then it's like, Every day your, your mind is reminded, reminding you of that same situation over and over again. And then eventually that evolves into a feeling that, okay, I want to forgive, even though I can't forgive right now. And then those pulses just get lighter and lighter until eventually, okay, now I'm ready to forgive. And now I'm ready to release the resentment entirely. And it's that gradual pulsing that gets there. It's like every day we're getting a little bit lighter and a little bit and lighter and a little bit lighter toward that resentment. And so that's the very mimicking that we'll be taking in our body today. So just enjoying the hips being open in this nice receptive position. Let's take five more beautiful breaths to be with whatever that raw emotion of resentment is today for us. Take another huge inhale. And with our exhale, we think in our mind, I'm at least willing to try to work on this resentment. Whether or not it's completely released today, that's a different story, but I'm willing to try. And so from that willingness, we begin some of our physical stretches today. We start to bring our knees in toward the chest. Our hands can go on each kneecap. And we can take just gentle little movements through the hips. So maybe these are circles left and right. Maybe you're rocking up and down. Just be with that low back for a moment. A lot of people hold their pain and their stress in that low back. So this rocking can give it a chance to just loosen up and massage. And then let's begin to release this left leg to the earth. You can even either just keep it planted or if you, if it's possible to stretch it long, try to go for that option. 
We're going to be working this right leg straight up to the sky. This is a good place to use your strap if you have one. Placing the strapper on the ball of the right foot, we can begin to stretch it up to the sky. And so note how I'm gripping. I start off with my hands closer to the foot, and then if I need more space, then the, the strap starts to slide a little bit further down. This prevents the T-Rex arms where it's way too much effort for the wrist and the arm state to keep it into the shape. Sometimes I'll even do a whole loop around my, my entire hand so that I don't even have to work to hold onto the strap. And so from here, we're in an easy place to start off with, an easy place where the leg is completely straight, so that could even be below 90 degrees. And then we're going to start little tiny pulses. And so when we pulse, we're trying to bring the leg closer to the torso, and then gently release it back to a good comfortable spot. So it's a nice slow pulse coming in, gentle release back out. Let's just keep on going a little bit longer through this leg. It's like the stretch is starting to get more and more willing to maybe start to open. Taking two more and then just hold at whatever the deepest spot we found right here. Just breathe and be. the right hand's trying to grip as close toward the foot as it can go. It doesn't have to go all the way. And so with this right hand holding onto the strap, bring your left hand to the hip, making sure the hip doesn't lift off the ground at all. That's, this is our reminder to stay very connected to the earth. And so from here we take a few pulses, opening the leg out as wide as it wants to go right now, and then lifting it right back up toward the sky. Go super, super slow, going wide and back up. Just make sure you don't go so far left, hip has to lift. Let's take two more wide and up. Wide and up. And then this one we're gonna hold. If your hand is getting tired, again, do that loop around the wrist as you hold the leg wide in that nice stretch. this leg back up, the left hand takes over. Again, you can just grip or do that full loop around the wrist with the strap. And for this one, the pulses won't go until we're actually in the stretch. And so take it very slowly, starting to tilt this right leg over to the left side. When you're about halfway there, just pause for a moment. I love to just feel the IT band stretching for me. And so take it another breath or so, just right there at the halfway tilted point. And then continue to tilt this straight leg all the way as far as it can go without lifting right shoulder off the ground. So oftentimes I'll drop the left elbow first and that elbow is able to help support the leg a little bit in the twist. Okay, so now from this point, the nice twist that we're in, the pulse that we're going to take is trying to get the toes closer to the direction of the shoulder and the head. 
and then a gentle release back to where it was. It might not go far at all, and that's okay. We give it permission to open up to any degree that it's willing to travel. Nice little pulse, and relax. Pulse, relax. Five, four, three, two, one, and then hold it as deep as it can go toward the toes lifting to the, to the angle of the head, toward the, the top edge of the mat. gradually going to return the hip back down. We can release the strap for now. This will give our hands a little break. Slide your left foot in, taking right ankle up onto left thigh. This gives us a chance to now be with the hip for a moment. So hands are going to thread around that left thigh or the left shin. That means that the right hand is going to reach into the triangle that your legs are forming. Sometimes I see people try to hug all the way around the outside of that right thigh and it doesn't work quite as well because the arms are not quite that long. So just reaching around that left thigh or shin, hug around. And no, even if this is a little bit too hard to reach, you can grab that strap and thread it around the thigh as well. Nothing wrong with that. start to release. Drop both feet to the ground, even sliding them long. And then both knees do little tiny wiggles. So the knees lift up and then they drop. Take that one or two more breaths. And then just find stillness. Notice how the legs are energetically right now. Imagine if the legs were filled with that resentment before that right leg at least felt a little bit more willing to forgive. And let's begin to work on the left leg. So start to bring that left foot in so you can take the strap around the ball of the foot. Remember to grip close. And then as you start to extend the, the leg away, it'll the strap will naturally come down to the perfect placement of your hands. You can always do that little loop around both wrists if that's helpful. Start off in an easy place where the leg is absolutely straight. And then our pulses here are pulling the leg closer to the torso and gentle relax. Pulling in, we fill our leg and we release. Keep the breath going. If we stop breathing, we're, it's almost like we're telling our body that this is a stressful situation. And so this is not the time to work on releasing resentment. But as we keep on breathing, it, it tells the body, okay, this is rest and digest mode. This is the time when I can process those emotions. Take three more, and two, and one, and then hold this leg for a few extra breaths at that nice deep point of the stretch. Bunch up both straps together. Left hand holds on to that. 
or if you even want to do the loop around that left hand now, that's great. Right hand drops down to the right hip, making sure that that stays solidly grounded into the earth. And then we start to open this left leg out to the left and leg rises back up. Repeating that a few times. Notice how as you move through that whole range, there's a variety of muscles that are being pulled into the stretch. It's a very different stretch up in, above your body than it is clear off to that left side. Let's take three more. Keep on breathing, maybe even synchronizing your movement with your breath. And then let this leg stay all the way open to left. the leg starts to rise back up. Let's begin to switch out the grip. Right hand takes over. Maybe set the straps all the way around the wrist already. We take this leg about halfway tilted down. So the leg is tilted over to the right at about a 45 degree angle. And pause right there for a moment, enjoying the IT band stretching out. Then we begin to tilt this leg all the way toward the twist, just to make sure you don't have to lift the right shoulder off the ground. So I drop the right elbow down. That gives the leg a little bit of support. Once you're as deep in the twist as your body's capable of right now, little pulses, the toes going a little bit further toward the direction of the head, neck, and shoulders, and then relax back to the comfortable spot. Even if it's an inch that you're pulsing, that's great. We allow our body permission to move any amount, any, any littlest uh, iota, even a millimeter counts in yoga. And so be with it, be proud of your body. Be happy that you're here taking time for yourself today. Take two more pulses. And then hold it as deep as it'll go off to this side. Good. Gradually return your hips back down to the ground. We can set our strap back off to the side. This time we do those little knee wiggles up to the sky. So our feet are lifted up and we let one knee straighten out and then the other just kind of nice little movements for the body. Feel how this affects the hips. The legs are connected right up to that hip joint. So feel how it's affecting it. It's almost like we're moving with liquid water right now. Good. So now the next pulse that we're going to take is that we start off with both legs glued together. If you need to make this easier, the knees can be a little bit bent. Straightening is harder. And then the motion that we take, we imagine that we've got a huge rubber band around our, our legs. And then, so we're creating our own resistance as the legs start to open as wide as they can stretch. And then the rubber band helps us as we Create resistance, squeezing the legs back together, not letting them slam together. Let's repeat that four more times, going wide and together. Three, two, and 
And this last one, stay wide. Bring hands to the inner thighs, helping to stay in the stretch. Letting both inner thighs open to gravity at the same time. If this starts to get too much and your legs get shaky, you can just bend the knees and the inner thighs, the hands are still helping the inner thighs stay open just by gravity and the weight, the added weight helping us out. Bending the knees, bring the knees back together. We're going to try to rock up to a seated position, rolling like a ball. If that doesn't work, just work your way up to a seated position and that's great. So perhaps hands can go behind backs of thighs, maybe three or four rounds, rocking ourselves up, trying to find a balance, and then rocking back. If you have a nice carpet behind you, this can be a nice gentle massage for the back muscles. One more time, and then when we're all the way up, we'll take cobbler's pose. The bottoms of the feet go together, inner thighs open, the knees going as wide as they can. Now, if you feel hips pulling you backward already, what I want you to do is leave your hands behind you and work on straightening your spine. If you can easily sit nice and tall, then grab your hands onto your ankles, lift the spine tall, tilt forward, and eventually find that ability to round up and over ground we support our spine as we rise up pick up both of the knees bringing the inner thighs together and from here we're going to have hands clasp together and try to place that just on the other side of the knees and this will hold us up so that we can work a little bit through our spine and through our heart area right now and so with any exhale you're rounding your spine as far back as you can reach with the hands clasped where they are you're starting to feel a nice stretch through that spot in between shoulder blades and then inhale the heart gets brought forward and through you can tug against the knees to help the arch happen and even lift the head up a little bit so then follow the pace of your own breath exhales to round back make sure you feel the stretch in between shoulder blades inhale pull the heart forward and through arching up and back like a fountain Good. Take that three more times. Beautiful. Now leave this left foot as it is. Use your hands or use the strap around the ball of the right foot to allow the right leg to begin to stretch upward. So if you try out your hands and it's a little bit hard to, to reach that far, just grab your strap and hold on to that instead. And so we're, we're going to add little tiny pulses to our legs, similar to before, just a little bit deeper now that we're lifted. And so the little pulse goes like this. We let the knee bend. That takes the stretch out of the hamstring. And then we extend the heel as far away as it possibly can go. Let's repeat that. Four, nice and slow. And stretch. Three. And stretch. Two. one. 
beautiful. Adding a little twist to the spine, this left hand either grabs onto both straps or left hand comes to the outside of the foot or ankle. The leg is crossed past midline toward, so right foot over toward the left. And then our chest starts twisting open to the side as we reach this right hand behind us. It can be on the ground or it can be floating. As we start to return the spine, let this left knee fall down to the ground, swivel the right knee open, still lifting up high for a moment, and we're holding on to this shin like a little baby cradle. The left hand is on the foot, right hand is on the knee, and we start to rock it out. If you feel like you can go a little bit deeper, start to slide the foot to the forearm or to the elbow. Rocking this out like a little baby cradle, try to keep the spine lifted nice and tall. Feel the hip getting deeper and deeper as we go. And then eventually drop this right shin directly onto the left shin. As long as you're able to keep both sitting bones on the ground, this is the shape that you'll take. If either hip starts to rise, just drop it down into simple cross-legged shape. Keep both feet flexed so you're not collapsing and weakening the ankle. And then we're going to try to tilt forward. So leaning, you start off with a straight tall spine. We walk our hands as far forward as they can go. And then when we can't go any further, start to round down. walk your hands back up, we're going to try to take the right elbow into the right inner arch. If you, that's not working for you at all, the twist is not quite that far, just slip your right elbow to the inside of the right knee instead. The left hand comes to touch the right hand in prayer position, and then we push that top hand into the bottom hand to help rotate the spine. Even let yourself wiggle your hands around in circles this helps to make that right elbow uh, massage into the arch of the foot if that's the position that you're taking. So we're twisting our heart open, helping to unwind it, giving that foot just a little bit of nice love through those elbow circles into the arch of the foot. Good, start to unwind. Plant both feet in front of you again, knees upright, clasping the hands around the knees. Let's take three more rounds. Exhale, rounding our spine all the way back. Inhale, heart forward, up and through. Two. And one. Great work. Leave the right foot down. We clasp hands around the left ball of foot or use that strap around that left ball of foot. We lean back just a little bit to counterbalance the weight of the leg that's going to extend forward. And we start to play with straightening it out. See how it feels on this side. Sometimes left and right are super different stories and that's okay. And let's begin our gentle pulses. The knee bends, hamstring is completely relaxed and then try to straighten it back out. Four. And straighten. Three. And two. And one. Good. We're holding it straight here. Right hand 
grabs onto both straps or right hand is at the outside edge of the foot, ankle, calf, whatever you can reach. The right hand brings that left foot crossed midline, midline all the way over to the right as far as it can go. Our posture is tall. We try to, try to rotate the spine open to this left side as the left hand drops to the floor or floats behind you. Great work. When we start to return forward, drop that right leg all the way to the ground. We start to cradle out this left leg, one hand at the knee, one hand at the foot, or slipping the foot further up to the forearm or elbow, and then rock it out like a little baby cradle. Imagine the toes are the head of the baby. You don't want to drop the head low, so instead try to lift the head up as much as it can and just gently rock it out. Enjoying this beautiful chance to be with the hip. Okay, when that feels pretty loose, start to drop left shin directly on top of right shin. Or again, take cross-legged shape, that's fine as well. With this position set in place, start to lift the spine tall, leaning forward, drop the hands to the ground, and walk your way all the way forward. rise back up. Here's where we take the prayer position twist. Left elbow either goes to left inner knee or left arch of foot. Right hand plants directly onto left hand in prayer position and then we push the right hand into the left hand to help the spine rotate open to the side. At the same time maybe the elbow is massaging into the arch of the foot. Little tiny circles. both of our legs behind and underneath us into a nice kneeling position. And let's take five sets of cat-cow, letting our spine go even deeper than before. So with our exhale, round the spine all the way up to the sky. Inhale, belly down, gaze up. Here's four. Three. Two and one. We're going to go into a nice calf stretch from here. Flatten the spine back out. Plant the right toes as far away from you as you can at the back of the mat. And then begin to push your hands into the earth so that you're pushing the heel backwards, stretching out that right calf. Sometimes I have to push so far that my left knee lifts up a little bit. So really feel the right calf stretching as long as it can possibly go. Good, starting to drop down to both knees, switch it out, tucking left toes at the back and press back until that left calf is in that nice stretch. Good. Drop back down to both knees. Make sure the hands are reset under the shoulders and we're taking downward facing dog. Tuck both toes, lift both hips all the way up to the sky. 
If you need to keep your knees a little bit bent, that's perfectly fine. It's better to have the straight spine than to be rounded and have straight legs. Some of us might want two or three more breaths here. Some of us might be ready to come forward. So whenever you, you reach that happy place, start to walk your feet forward until you're hanging heavy at the top of the mat. No rush if you're still making your way forward. Whenever we're in this forward fold today, we're going to have hands placed behind the back of the thighs or behind the back of the calves. We're trying to lengthen our spine. And then that grip of the hands on the back side of the legs helps us to pull the torso just a little bit closer to the thighs. And then gentle release, just letting the spine go where it normally wants to go. So lengthen and then pull in again and release the, the arm effort. So that gentle, gentle pull, making sure you include the lengthening each time. And release. Taking about three more of those rounds, pulsing in and releasing back out. After that third one, bend both of your knees and let's roll our spine back up to stand, making sure we stack one vertebrae at a time until the head is back up. Once the head is up, circle the arms up to the sky, do a slight arch backward, and hands drop down to the heart. From here, drop the right hand to the right thigh. Left hand circles all the way up and over. And rises down all the way up. Planting left hand down, circle right hand up and over. And rise. Bring the hands to the heart for a moment. The word OM, we use it a lot in yoga classes and we don't often talk about how significant it is. The three different letters, A-U-M, represent three parts of a cycle. The A is the beginning, the creation. The U is everything that happens in between. It's the story, it's the life that we live. And the M is the completion, the end, the death. And so that in itself is a cycle. So think of OM as a cycle helping like, where perhaps there's the beginning of our resentment. And then there's the work as we start to create the desire to forgive. And the M is that final release, just letting it go. And so in a, in a moment, we're going to head into a pose using the word OM. So I wanted us to talk about that now while we're here in a comfortable standing place. So as we're heading back to that shape, inhale, circle the arms clear up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold all the way down. Inhale, sliding the hands up the shins. Our spine is lifted halfway up, nice and long. And exhale, the hands go back down. Just the right foot lunges all the way toward the back of the mat. And then once you're in that lunge, drop the right knee down. The hips go over this back knee, the front leg goes straight, and we're going to bow forward for another hamstring stretch. So our hands try to go on the floor, the leg stays as straight as it possibly can to find that deep length through the hamstring. And then if we still have space to drop the chest down toward the thigh, give it as much space as you have. We're continuing to breathe, even though we might feel a little bit more compressed right here. As we start to rise up a little bit higher, slide this left foot in to plant. Tuck the right toes behind you. 
and we're going to try to sit our glutes onto that that right heel this will bring our foot into a nice ham into a nice arch of the foot stretch starting to get into some of the fascia if we stay a little bit too long and your foot starts to ache a lot just come up to a higher kneeling place to give it a little break otherwise try to stay as long as we can from here bring your hands together to touch resting that left elbow on the left knee and your thumb comes to your forehead and here even if it's just mentally five times we're going to say the word om trying to bring it through that full cycle and so i know sometimes zoom cuts out when i have an extended word so if you don't hear me through part of it that's okay take our inhale for the fifth om One more inhale. Great work. Drop your hands forward. Let that foot that we were just sitting on have a chance to wiggle through the foot. That fascia doesn't always get a chance to stretch. So if that was the first time you've done that in a while, that could have been intense. And so we breathe through it. We love our foot for everything it does for us. And now from here, this is going to be the most challenging pose of the day. If the floor ends up being a little bit too much for you, you can bump your hands up to a chair or table, whatever's in the space that you have. And so hands start off on the ground with this left foot that's in front of us, that's going to become our standing foot. And so we begin to lift the right knee up, just try to straighten through that left leg. And this right foot floats behind us. We're going to slowly transition this up into a standing split. But if this is what you've got, this balance right here, this is great. And so from here, the knee starts to lift higher and higher, keeping the hips square, lifting the toes all the way as high as they can, a standing split. Let's take two more good breaths. And then drop both feet down. Let's gradually take little baby steps with our hands and our feet until we end up at the top of the mat. And then we're taking another forward fold. We can either use the same version, hands behind the calves or thighs, pulsing in and out. Or if you can reach your hands to hug around the big toe, use that option instead this time. So find length and then pull in as deep as it can go. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, pull deeper. Go through two more cycles. And then dropping the hands, we're taking the half lift, inhale the spine as long. Exhale, hands slide back down. Left foot lunges all the way back behind you toward the back of the mat. Drop down onto that left knee. And the front leg goes straight. Once that front leg is as straight as it can go, with fingertips on the floor, start to see if your chest is willing to get closer toward that thigh. Good, coming up a little bit. We work on planting the right foot in front of us. We tuck the left toes behind us and we come back to sit on that ankle. Again, if you need to come up and out of this a couple of times, that's okay. 
Resting our right elbow on the right side, bring my hands to prayer position. Resting the thumbs on the forehead. And let's take five cycles of OM. Trying to feel that whole cycle. Feel that pulse through the completion and the forgiveness of our resentment. So inhale. Oh. 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 Great work. Coming forward, plant the hands. Let the toes wiggle out just a little bit. And then that last challenging pose of the day. Keep this right foot planted in front of you. That's going to be the standing leg. Fingers are on the ground already. We try to lift up, coming to stand on that right leg. This left knee is bent at first. That's okay to just stay right there. Or if you have more space, to begin extending left toes higher and higher and higher. See how you can find your standing split right here. Taking three more breaths. Eventually dropping that leg all the way down. Take an extra bonus breath or two, just hanging here in the forward fold. And then gently make your way all the way to sitting down. We've got a couple of final stretches before we head into our meditation um, with our Shavasana today. So I'd like us to extend the left leg out in front of us. Plant the right foot with the right knee floating upward. And we're going to take a twist. So the left hand grabs the right knee or the left elbow grabs the right knee. And we lengthen our spine up tall with an inhale. Exhale, twist over that right side. Returning forward, let this right thigh drop all the way open to the ground. With a huge inhale, circle the arms up to the sky. This helps us to have a nice straight spine. As we exhale, forward fold, stretching over that left foot. You even want to grab your strap right here and use that to help you. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, starting to rise back up. Switch out the legs. The right one's in front of you. The left foot is planted. The right hand grabs the left knee or the, the right elbow grabs the left knee. We straighten the spine up tall and begin to twist, gazing all the way behind you. When we start to return, this thigh falls open. We inhale, circling the arms up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. That last beautiful stretch for the right leg. When we rise all the way up, let's make our way down onto our backs for our Shavasana pose. If you just want the nice, flat, normal shape of Shavasana, just laying down, that's great. If you'd like to take the cobbler's pose again, having bottoms of the feet together, knees open, that's absolutely beautiful as well. Your personal preference. And so as you find yourself here, we'll begin our meditation for our Shavasana today. And so I'd like you to 
take a couple of good deep breaths again bringing to your belly bringing to your heart those feelings of resentment that might still be present and maybe they've they've transformed a little bit just through the, the physical practice that we had but bring these emotions right to the center of our mind so that we can feel what it feels to be wronged to be the victim to be put in that tough situation and letting that just be right there present at the center we begin to take ourselves mentally to a relaxed place maybe this is a beach that you can imagine sitting in just watching the ocean waves come in in and out perhaps this is a beautiful mountain or a grassy valley that you'd like to sit in and just bring yourself to that peaceful place noticing the contrast And start to feel love welling up in your heart. Bring to your mind's eye somebody that you love very dearly. Somebody who means the world to you. And imagine some of these people that love you, imagine them off in a private conversation in a room, chatting about you. And imagine the things that they say so positively about you how they compliment you, your goodness, your grace. Even though you're not perfect, they love you and they love being around you. And bring those feelings of love to your heart. And from here, Begin to imagine a person you view as a very enlightened person, almost like a master. Perhaps this is somebody like Nelson Mandela, who was definitely wronged. He had all the reason to have resentment, 27 years in, in prison, and yet he refused to hold on to resentment. He said that holding on to resentment is like drinking a poison and wishing that the other person felt the effects of it. So perhaps that's the person you're bringing into your mind's eye, or maybe somebody like Christ, who as he was getting nailed to the cross to die, he said, Father, forgive them. These people don't know what they're doing. So bring somebody to your mind's eye who is the very embodiment of loving and forgiveness and peacefulness. And now bring yourself into a scene where you're with the person that you're holding resentment against. And imagine that you're going to bring it up to them and you're going to work through it together. And you feel some of these feelings of fear and just anxiousness at the encounter. And so here we pause the scene and behind you, you see that enlightened person that you're envisioning, perhaps Christ or Nelson Mandela, that person walking up behind you and they say to you, wow, that's a tough one. Do you mind if I give it a go? And in that moment, you're able to switch bodies with this person. Pushing play on the scene, you see how they enter this scene with grace and ease, compassion and forgiveness. And you feel how those feelings of anxiety and guilt don't have to be present. There is a solution, there is a way to encounter that problem with grace and ease. And so flipping the situation back around, you switch bodies once again, coming into your own body. 
and feel how it felt to have the residual energy of that master within your own body. And feel here making the commitment, I can forgive, I can have love, I can have compassion, I'm not the victim. And with this willingness to move forward, we're going to have another minute of just silent breathing to imagine what comes next in this situation, the best possible outcome. So here as we begin to come back into our own body in this present moment, take a, a nice deep inhale, a relaxed exhale. Begin to introduce little movements back to fingers and toes, ankles and wrists, stretching out like we're waking up first thing in the morning. When you feel ready, roll over to a nice fetal position on one side, taking an extra breath or two just to be back in this own body, still feeling what it felt like to have the master within us. As we rise up, we can join our hands together in front of our heart. And as we take this last ohm together, remember again what that ohm means. It can be any point of the cycle that you wish to dwell in. It can still be at the very beginning of resentment. It can be right there in the midst of it. Or we can choose right here, right now, to conclude that energy, to let it go right out of our body with our voice. And so with this conscious decision helping us move forward, let's finish with the sound of OM. Inhaling together now. Om. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'm happy to stick around and chat for anybody who wants to. Thank you. You're so welcome. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Welcome, Lauren. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. Thank you. <laughs> how are you guys? Yeah, mom, how did you do? <laughs> I did. <laughs> she did. That's the important thing. Nice. <laughs> uh -uh. No way this is happening. <laughs> the the standing <laughs> For the standing split part or which one? Um, I think it was the one where you like sit back on your heel. <laughs> she was like, oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That one was kind of a hard one. <laughs> yep. Sometimes sometimes with that one, um, people will like grab a block and sit on the block or something like that. So there's there's a couple of options. <laughs> yeah.